Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here and welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. It's been a pretty crazy series between the Thunder and the Warriors, and I'm not sure anybody would have predicted that the Thunder would be up 3-1 to one going into Game 5, but here we are. They've been getting every loose ball and so many offensive rebounds, and that crowd is it's so intimidating just watching it on TV, I can't even imagine what it was like for the Warriors playing in that environment. Now, before we get into the analysis and I show you the small ball lineup of death, why it's not working, and I have a great suggestion to make it work and perhaps turn the series around for the Warriors, I want to tell you about our friends over at SeatGeek because they are the best place online to get sports and concert tickets. When you open up their awesome app, you can see the vantage point of the seat right there. They give the seats each a grade so you know you're getting a great price. And if you go into the settings in the app and put in my code BBALL, you'll save 20 bucks off your first purchase. So I know that Simmons and Woj are talking about it all the time, but use my code BBALL in the settings and you'll save and I'll look good. You win. Let's bring in Nate Duncan for a segment we like to call Nate's Numbers, where he examines some of his possession-based stats for us. It was another dominant performance for the Thunder in the first half, outscoring the Warriors 72-53 on a turbocharged pace of 58 possessions. The Thunder lineup with Ibaka at center and Robertson at power forward KO'd the vaunted Warriors death lineup, stealing the moniker for themselves. Over the past two games, that unit has outscored the Warriors 91-35 to when it's been on the floor. And in the first half overall, on Tuesday, the Thunder offensive rebounded 13 of their 26 misses, forced 13 turnovers with 9 steals, and also shot free throws on one out of every four possessions as they physically overwhelmed the Warriors yet again. For the better part of two seasons, the Golden State Warriors have been able to turn to a lineup that has stymied the rest of the NBA. Dubbed the Small Ball Lineup of Death, it features Harrison Barnes, Steph Curry, Draymond Green, Andre Iguodala, and Klay Thompson. And when you look at their net rating, you can see why it struck fear into the hearts of their opponents whenever Coach Steve Kerr went to it. While it was only used in 37 games last year, at just under three minutes a game, it was enough to turn their fortunes around when they needed it. When last year's playoffs rolled around, Kerr unleashed this lineup to wreak havoc and suddenly they played it in 16 games for an average of almost 7 minutes a game. The net rating shows what kind of advantage they got and it was the key to winning the finals against Cleveland. Cut to this year and Steve Kerr used it 4.6 minutes a game over 37 games, helping to propel them to the most historic season of all time. Its net rating was an astounding plus 47, and there was no reason to think it would ever stop working anytime soon. As this series has tilted in favor of the Thunder, who now lead 3-1, the small ball lineup of depth has been a relative disaster. It is the Warriors' most played lineup over the last two games, and their net rating makes your jaw drop. So let's dive into the footage and see what is going on and how much of the issues are related to the Thunder's incredible length and intensity and how much is connected to the Warriors' lack of focus and inattention to detail. In Game 3, the lineup suffered from the case of the Yips, missing easy shots that they would normally hit. The only question is, was it because of the length and athletic ability of the Thunder? They certainly got the shots they wanted, going strong to the rim, but one thing they hadn't counted on is the incredible defensive play of Kevin Durant, who's been making ridiculous plays on this end all series long. Let's look at how Thunder coach Donovan is matching up. In games 3 and 4, he has gone almost exclusively to this lineup, and he has Durant on Draymond and Ibaka on Barnes. This allows the Thunder to match the length and athleticism of the Warriors and unleash the destructive nature of Kevin Durant on defense. Ibaka has gotten into the act as well, perhaps rediscovering his shot blocking ability when the Warriors break down the initial defense. Running a double pin down for Clay usually gets something open, and while Durant does a great job to smother the drive, they find Draymond open under the basket, but he just misses the gimme. Again, the quick drag screen, which normally works wonders, gets Golden State the shot they want, a layup. But it's unclear why Iguodala would sprint right into the lane, bringing his man over to expertly block this shot. Draymond has clearly been off on both sides of the floor, and it's not clear why. He directs the break perfectly, but then throws this pass too low, and here's Durant again being as good on defense as a guy like Kawhi Leonard. 
In Game 4, it was all about the live ball turnovers. I'm sure in the regular season, Curry had been able to pass to the rolling bogey without thinking twice. But Steven Adams is a straight play maker, and this deflection gets them going on the break. With Durant on Draymond, it allows him to get his long arms involved on this step up screen and just cold rip Steph Curry. Here's a turnover that wasn't caused by the defense as Draymond tries to force this pass and an easy steal by Russ leads to another fast break. Green's struggles are real. He has lost his ferocity and emotional fire, and he's hurting the team more than he's helping. This turnover is head-scratching and inexcusable since he knew Robertson was there. When the Warriors went on a run, they get some movement, Clay thought he saw something, then tries to pull the pass back, but ends up being a horrible turnover, passing it right to Russ. Again, is it due to the thunder or just losing focus? Even when they executed their out-of-bounds plays well, this Iguodala pass is thrown too softly, allowing Robertson to step around for a great steal. A good pass gives them two points. And this game was just about to be over as OKC has an 18-point lead with under five to go when Barnes tries to drive it lefty and just drops it to Durant. Can you hear me shaking my head? Well, now let's look at how OKC is scoring on this lineup. Ibaka slips the screen, well contained, and Draymond ignores his man Robertson in the corner. That said, why close out like this? They should be happy to see him shooting the three, yet he blows right by Draymond, Clay runs away, and Barnes doesn't rotate either. After the missed layup we showed you earlier, it allows the Thunder to push the ball up and force mismatches all over the floor. Draymond gets blown by again, and they've got Curry having to rotate instead of Barnes because of the initial mismatches. Boom goes Dion freaking Waiters. The Thunder then run a flare for Russ, well defended until the skip pass gets Iguodala all out of position, forcing a poor closeout and Barnes can't do much when Durant has a straight line drive. But on the skip pass, why is Iguodala moving like this? It's just out of character and strange. And that great block by Durant triggers a fast break much like a live ball turnover would and there's nothing the Warriors can do when Russ gets the runway cleared. I will credit the Thunder defense where credit is due, but how can you explain the offense getting so out of sorts that they actually have two players trying to set a single flare screen for Steph, and then they both cut at the same time, and then Draymond tries to pass it to one of them. This doesn't look like he was suffering from defensive pressure to me, and once the ball got in transition, no one is stopping this freight train till it gets to the station. Unlikely three balls have been dropping as well for the Thunder. Once this lineup stopped producing results, the lead continued to grow here and suddenly Robertson making a three-pointer with a 33-point lead doesn't sound too far-fetched. And here, Waiter spots up off the break and hits it with Curry in his face. And then Ibaka taps the ball loose out to the corner where Russ happened to be in perfect position for the wide open three. Russ hasn't been able to do too much damage to Steph Curry, and here's an example of really good defense, but Russ uses supreme aerial talents to get this ball to go in under duress. And sometimes the basketball gods don't shine down on you. This is a poor lob thrown from Westbrook, but somehow Durant is not only able to get his hands on it, but gets it to Robertson, and again, this is the shot the Warriors want, and Robertson nails it. And finally, the decision to put Draymond on Robertson worked to perfection in Game 2, but Donovan's adjustment has been terrific. Either get him cutting to the hoop and find him for easy buckets, occasionally spot him up in the corner but have him attack the rim where he's been a surprisingly good passer, or have him ball screen, then roll hard to the rim. I don't think the Warriors were counting on him being able to short roll and make good decisions against their defense, but he's been spot on all series long. So what will the Warriors need to do? Being down 3-1 puts them in a desperate situation and calls for desperate measures. I think they should go to the small ball lineup of death to start the game. The Thunder play much better from ahead, and their hot starts have doomed the Warriors from ever getting back in the game. They can put Draymond on Adams, Iguodala on Durant, Steph on Russ, Clay on Robertson, and Barnes on Ibaka and play it straight up. Stop trying the ignore Robertson pseudo zone, which Donovan has clearly figured out. It's worth looking at since there is zero margin for error, and if things continue the way they've been going, this series will be shockingly over in five games.